All right. Says we are live. So, yay! Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. This is Step Zen, the Step Zen what, Friday or Friday moment of Zen. We had we had some sort of saying in there in the Twitter, but I forget what it was. This is a yeah. This is the stream that Lucia and I are going to do, building out um, some cool Redwood GraphQL Jamstacky kind of stuff. But um, before we kind of get into like what we're going to be building and stuff like that, let's first just kind of like introduce ourselves, say who we are. So if anyone watching out there can get a feel for who we are and how we got involved in StepZen. Yeah. Um, so I'm Lucia Cerci. I'm a software engineer at StepZen. And I've gotten involved very recently. And I'm super excited to be exploring the Jamstack applications of it, especially with live streams like these. Totally. Yeah. And I am Anthony Campolo. I did one of these um, a couple weeks ago and I'm really excited to get back in it. And I did a solo stream, but this time Lucia and I are going to do, we're going to do actually a bunch of these where one of us is going to kind of lead the other through a project. If you've ever watched something like a learn with Jason or those kind of streams where you have one person, they, they call it like a navigator and then driver, right? Yeah, yeah, so you have the Fowler pair programming definition. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so Lucia will be driving and I'll be navigating for this because I'll be navigating the app that I built and I'll be walking her through how to how yeah, to build it. So yeah, doing a little Cody, a little Cody things as <laughs> Kim, Ad Kim Adeline says. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So to get us started, you can go ahead and also minimize your screen that's got StreamYard in the background. You're gonna to want to grab that Git tab that was in it though at some um, point. Just yes. think I'm thinking thinking steps ahead here. So <laughs> cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to generate a very basic Redwood application. And the way we're gonna do this is with the command yarn space. Create. Right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, you already got it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's oh yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so do you have like the snippet saved somewhere? Uh, oh, you're pulling them off screen because you have two. You have two another screen, right? Yeah, I, this is just from a, an old copy. Gotcha. Place, so. so what's going to happen here is that we're going to be just generating a blank Redwood application. So why don't I first kind of explain what Redwood is? Because I'm actually on the Redwood JS core team, and it's a open source JavaScript framework for React and GraphQL, and it's about building full stack applications, especially. So full stack, meaning that you have your front end view and your database layer and some kind of intermediary that lets the two of them talk to each other and that your whole project is is contained in like one place. So that's really kind of the idea of Redwood JS. And I know Lucia, you've poked around a little bit in Redwood, but you haven't like dove into a ton. So I'd be curious, like kind of what's your current take on Redwood? Yeah, it's it's amazing to me how quickly you can build a full stack application with it. Like we are done right now in 30 seconds. Um, and we've got, so it, it reminds me of a bit of other like front end application generators, except that you've got your back end all spun up for you, which is- Totally, yeah. And you're someone who came through the kind of boot camp world like, like me. And so neither of us really got the experience of ever learning Ruby on Rails. But if you if you learned Ruby on Rails, you you look at Redwood and you're like, uh, this is like mostly just ripping off Ruby on Rails. <laughs> is usually usually Ruby on Rails reactions when they see Redwood, they're like, uh, JavaScript finally just ripped off a bunch of Ruby stuff. So, but was I I really like it because the way I think about it is it's bringing conventions to React because React has always been heavier on the build it yourself, take little pieces build them up together, the kind of like, you know, small component building up to larger ideas. So it makes sense. And that's, and that's great for React. And that's why React has been so successful because it owned that space by itself. But people try and treat it like it's a whole application building framework and, and it's not. So I think it's natural to see these, what we call like meta frameworks get built up that are building abstractions on top of React and bringing in other libraries and integrating them for you in a way that's like really nice and and easy to work with. So that's kind of like that the high level like elevator pitch of of what Redwood JS is. Right. Yeah. There's a total flurry of those those meta frameworks, but Redwood's the only one I've seen so far that does the back end. Yeah, Blitz.js is another big one. They've been around for close to like a year now, along with Redwood. Technically, Redwood's been around for like 
two to three years, but it didn't really go public till like a year ago. So there's lots of <laughs> weird, confusing histories of, of all these things. But yeah, I would say for someone who's looking for a full stack React framework, you want to look at Redwood and you want to look at Blitz. I'm also a really big fan of this project called Bison, which is a little bit lesser known, but um, it's done by the Echo Bind team and it's, and it's really cool. And so well, I can talk about this all day, so let's get into yeah. building this yeah. application. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to CD into the project that we created. Right. Let's go ahead and bump your font up just one. I think that would be good. And that. Yeah. We won't spend too much time in here anyway. Yeah, so yeah, go ahead and find what you named your project directory. I think it was Steps in Redwood Shopify, yeah. So we're just going to enter our directory. And then to start our development server, we're going to use yarn rwdev. So before you run that, what's happening here is we have rw is just short for Redwood. And yarn is kind of like NPM, or actually it's kind of more like NPX technically. But it's, um, it's just a tool that lets you work with your project on the command line. And this is kicking off a Webpack server along with uh, backend API as well. So right now we're just looking at the front end. You see how we're on localhost 8910. You don't want to make your font way bigger for your, for your browser. OK, yeah, I guess we can't make the, the URL and the stuff up. That's fine. Yeah. OK, so yeah. There so must be a trick, you, but uh, I haven't figured yeah, it out yet. Yeah. That, yeah, it's good, though. So if we go to localhost, Eight nine ten, you get this. This is your hello world redwood splash page. But if you go to eight nine eleven, go ahead and go there. You see here the following serverless functions are available. And if you click GraphQL, you see you have this whole playground here. So don't run the query yet. Yeah, we gotta yeah, build this first. We we show them the magic. So this is a, a graphical playground, and it's a really nice way to work with the GraphQL API. So we'll kind of build up how we actually get to this layer in the Redwood app in a second. Right now, what we want to do is we want to just open up our Redwood project and our VS code, and we're going to keep our development server running on our terminal, and we're going to open up another terminal in VS code. Yeah, so that's just going to keep on doing this thing, and then go ahead and get it. And then what we want to do is we want to have another terminal because we have a lot of Redwood commands that make it really nice in terms of like generating pieces of your your mm -hmm. application. And that's kind of what you get from that. Your terminal is also super duper small there. But <laughs> yes, that, <laughs> so make, go ahead and small. increase your VS code font a ton. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Maybe. Cool. And go ahead and just like close out of some of those extra things and close that welcome screen also. All right. So let's just kind of wrap our minds around what's happening here before we start clicking down these these rabbit holes. Because the Redwood project, it can be a little overwhelming like the first time you, you go into it. So really, don't worry about any of these things except for web and API. So click open web and click open API. Yeah. So if we just look at this, what is happening is our web is like a Create React app. It has a public and a source folder, uh, so, so, and then we have like components, layouts, pages, all that kind of stuff. And then in the API folder, that's where we have a DB, which if you open that, that's got a schema.prism, which we're not going to use at all. We're actually just going to go ahead and delete that. So go ahead and delete the DB folder. And so literally, you can just delete it, and the project doesn't care at all. So some people like think of frameworks with ORMs as being like these really tightly coupled kind of monolithic things. That's actually not the case. You can just delete Prisma by, by doing that. And then in the SRC folder, click that open. This is where we're going to have the Redwood API. And this is actually the really key piece of all of this stuff and how it all fits into steps and why all this stuff is super interesting and super cool yeah. is because this is a giant GraphQL handler that smushes together your schema and your resolvers into one single thing that can be deployed to an AWS Lambda. So if you don't know anything about AWS Lambda or GraphQL, that was like the most like word soup you've probably ever heard. But it's essentially your entire backend is one giant function that can be deployed to the cloud. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a steps in GraphQL API to query from the Redwood API 
and then query from the Redwood front end to the Redwood API. And we'll, we'll walk through this, this whole flow. So don't worry too much if, if none of that makes a ton of sense. But to just kind of orient people and wrap their minds around what's happening here, let's just generate our basic home page in our web folder. So click open a terminal just like in VS Code. I always use my terminal like outside of it, so yeah, yeah. It's just for for demos, I find this is this is really the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> command, I, command I, J. Advantage, right? There we go. Yeah. Cool. So what we're gonna do here is the yarn redwood generate page. I'm going slightly out of order here from the from the script. So <laughs> this is the yeah. So yarn redwood generate page, and then home, and then forward slash and. Let me kind of explain what's happening here also. So again, we have the yarn redwood, which is just doing like a generate or just doing a CLI command. And that command specifically is generate. And that command is going to generate a page. And that page is going to be called home. So let's go ahead and go to our web folder pages. Yep. And then home page. Yeah. So you're already finding your way around redwood app. <laughs> and then delete everything except an H1 that just says like, Hello World or Redwood Plus Steps in or something like that. And that's leaving in. Yeah, just get rid of the get, get rid of the P tags, but leave the fragment. Yep. And then just go ahead and change the and you can pull out your imports also. We're not gonna have any extra pages, so we don't need the router or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so go ahead and save that and then just open back up your browser and we'll see that this has automatically updated and replaced. So just go like into the, the web browser where we have this, this running. Yep. Yeah, so you, yeah, there you go, yep. So go ahead and change that to eight, nine, 10. So now we're going back to the website and we see that this is the home page we've created. All our home page is, is just a React component displaying in H1. So that should be pretty intuitive to anyone who's done any React development before. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually build out the steps in schema. So the steps in scheme is going to be how we actually connect to Shopify. We're using Shopify as our backend to query products from the Shopify backend. And the idea being that we're doing all the mapping of the config and the API keys and making sure that that's all handled and being done in, in a secure way. And so we'll, we'll get more into that once we kind of get more into the data flow. Let's go ahead and just do the, create our directory structure for the for the steps in API. Find that over here. This is yeah. a sample that you can follow along if you want to do what we're doing today. Um, I'm sure one of us can drop the URL in the chat in a minute. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I should point out too that this, that picture you saw at the top, which I felt pretty pretty proud about is going to be changed very soon because it's off brand. So it's so your only chance oh. to see it. <laughs> All right. So I'm grabbing. Yeah. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a directory called steps in and create a directory inside steps in called schema. And this is going to contain our GraphQL schema that's going to be talking to to Shopify. I'm going to do that in here. <laughs> Yeah, cool. And so, and so what I'm doing here, this is kind of worth just pointing out like what is happening here. You can do this, what we're doing this step right now, we're going to build out the steps and API. This is all totally decoupled from, from Redwood and you can just do this kind of part by itself and have a schema and then connect it to any kind of friend you want. What we're doing here is I'm actually building this into the project structure of a Redwood app because Redwood has very specific conventions about where something like an API would even go, whereas like most frameworks don't. So that's kind of what's, what's happening here is that we're kind of merging some Redwood isms with how you can work with, with steps in. And so that's why we're creating these, these folders here. And there's no like, there's no Redwood generate command for this, you know? Yeah, yeah. the flexibility of steps in is it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And then the next command we're going to do, this is going to create two files. One is going to be our products.graphql file, which is going to have our product schema. And then we're going to have an index.graphql, which is something that comes with all Redwood, uh, sorry, all StepZen projects, because the whole point of StepZen is that not only can you query a backend through GraphQL really easily, you can 
also combine many different GraphQL back, many different backends into a single GraphQL kind of API. And this is the way I always think about these kind of example applications is I'm kind of most concerned about how is this going to make sense to like all of you out there watching this, you know? So this is going to be like really, really simple. Like the schema we're going to be creating here is like literally the most basic schema I could possibly write with a single object and a query returning a list of those objects. So like this is not meant to be like a production application or anything like that. This is meant to be like a way to think about what is the entire data flow here happening? What is like the minimum viable stack you can build with these tools? And um, go ahead and grab those those code snippets for products. I'm going to start with index because um, in this we have a schema that allows us to really what it does is um, it tells the query what what GraphQL files we're pulling on. So if we wanted more than one, for example, we could put a comma and then add another one. But today we're just going to work with one. And products. Ooh, yeah, so but, but, yeah, but, those, yeah. we've got two set them together. Yes. Yep. Fields on this interface defining what we're gonna grab. Cool. It's also here. worth mentioning that you're not gonna have to use interfaces. And like we had just gotten to the point now where you can just kind of write write a basic schema without having to do this interface stuff. But this is a project I built a couple of weeks ago and haven't refactored it yet, so that's why we're looking at these interfaces here. But, but uh, that, or even the supplies. Directive. Yeah, the general idea though is the REST connector. The REST connector is really the important thing because that's where we're yeah. actually going to connect to the the Shopify backend. So if you want to kind of talk about that and the kind of like config file, I guess a, a really important thing to kind of talk about. Right. Yeah. So our config file allows us to connect um, to the backend and that's going to have your keys in it. Um, this references the config file, which we'll create in a moment. Um, this is the endpoint that you're querying and this result root, I haven't actually worked with the result root much. Anthony, you want to say something about that one? Yeah, so the result root, this is one of those moments where I'm like, oh, let me just go read the steps and docs out loud and see what happens. <laughs> empty, the default is just the data part of your JSON, the top level. So here I think we're specifying just so we're removing a level. But Yeah, so, oh yeah, so, okay, this, yeah, no, actually I know exactly what this is. So the result root is basically like, sometimes when you get this data back from this, you're getting like, it's on like a data object or there's like an extra layer of like indirection between like the data you're getting and the data you actually want to get. So I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. Yeah, just kind of peels off an extra part of the yeah. data. Cool, okay, so that is the products schema. And now we have a way to basically instantly deploy these. And so we've already deployed the, the API once we first built on this project. So we're just gonna kind of pull up an uh, API editor or use use Postman, right? So you can bring up whatever whatever it is you wanna, you wanna query it with. Yeah, and what we're doing here is we're going to just make a GraphQL request to, and you're gonna, that's, you're gonna wanna make the whole, that whole thing bigger. Right. Uh, um, it's not responding to my usual shortcut. Yeah. Let's see if there is Zoom available. Um, yeah, I don't know how to make this bigger. I wonder if plug for insomnia right here then. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that yeah. So basically, what's what's happening here is we're just gonna send a, a GraphQL query, and we also have yeah. So let's just uh yes, yeah, so like actually like hit the send. It's so like you see they're actually like making the query. Yeah. yeah. So right now that is sending a query, which is then returning just some kind of dummy data there, and this is what's really cool about using something like steps in is that you can kind of work it up in multiple layers where you start with just right now, we just have the API. Like this is just a GraphQL API that we can interface with by making GraphQL queries. And we're doing that by just literally just sticking a GraphQL query in the body as a string of text and just throwing it over the wire. And 
we also then have headers which set the authorization so we have an authorization key that comes along with your steps and api that gets deployed and then we're also going to be able to use those keys then to connect our redwood api to the steps and api now you may be thinking why is there an extra layer of indirection here? Like, why don't we just query directly from our front end? Why do we need the Redwood API to query another GraphQL API to have, to have the front end query that? It, does, it might not make any sense. And the thing is that you've ever heard the expression, don't trust the client? Let's see. I, 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 I thought you were asking that rhetorically. <laughs> this, this, is, this is important. So don't trust the client. This is a very important thing. Don't trust the client means don't, ever have anything in code as being shipped to a browser that you don't want someone to be able to see. <laughs> Basically that anytime you have something in your JavaScript React front end application that's being deployed on like a Netlify or a Vercel, like that whole thing is a bunch of, like a whole bunch of code that is sent to your device when you go to that website. So your device takes a big blob of JavaScript and like that's the website. So if you're a big blob of JavaScript, it involves a bunch of keys that are connected to a bunch of accounts that you don't want to be public, then that's really bad because then you're exposing a bunch of keys. So that's why having the Redwood API set up for serverless function deployment is so nice because it literally already has you set up out of the box to do what most people are doing by themselves where they're writing their own bespoke Lambda functions to manage their keys. And this right. is like a really common thing that a lot of people are doing. It's one of the main things you do with with these Lambda functions in a jam stacky kind of way. And, and Carlos wrote a great blog post about this that I reference right here. So it's uh, really cool that this is one of those things where I kind of went through the process of trying to build out a bunch of different things with steps in and going like, you know, the Apollo, the GraphQL request, you know, there's next using the fetch request, like all this kind of stuff. And you always ended up back at like, okay, but how do you manage the, your keys though? And so, at the end of the day, I realized, okay, like Redwood solved this problem. Like, and they, they're, as far as I know, the only ones who like have solved it in a way that is really a convention that's baked into the framework. Like it's, you can write these kind of functions pretty dang easily with, with Next and, and Vercel, but not as easily as this, I don't think, you know? So now that we've got this set up, let's start actually building out our backend, our Redwood backend now. So. What we're gonna do now is we're going to, yeah, let's start, let's start there. So let's go to the, so go to our API folder and SRC functions graphql.js. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cool, so uh, at first copy the, the new line of code and let me explain that before I, this, this, so this is gonna change. So we're just gonna slightly modify this so the Redwood API knows what, what we're doing here because we're changing a couple things in terms of how the the because we're not importing the Prisma client, we're importing a GraphQL request client. But um, basically, this is when I was talking about your whole backend being smushed into one giant Lambda handler function kind of thing. This is it. This is why it says at the bottom, export const handler equals create GraphQL handler. This is one of the things I really like about how the Redwood people think about writing code. Like I. This is code that I've like has been very, very opaque to me for as long as I've been doing Redwood. But at the same time, I've always known that this creates a GraphQL handler. So it says right there, create GraphQL handler. And it's like, you can have no idea what any of this else of this code is doing here, but knowing that is like really, really important. So that just means that there is no server. Like there is no always on running server. That is your application. Your whole backend is literally just a function that can be called and invoked automatically. And so that is how that all works. I'm actually working on making this portable and getting this deployed to Azure functions, which is super, super interesting stuff. But now we can create our Redwood schema. So we're gonna create a schema that's going to be pretty similar to the, the steps in schema that we created, except it's just going to have the just the product. And so go down a little bit. So products.sdl.js, yeah, so first do the, command to generate it. And this is one of the things we have generators for um, SDLs and for services, but the generators are, they, they use the Prisma schema to, to generate the, the thing. So we're, uh, that's what gave me one thing. I was actually, Christopher Burns has been actually talking to me about this forever, about that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, yep. 
Yep, so that's all good. And GraphQL, yep, products.stl.js, yep. Let me grab the code. Here's the GraphQL True, true. Just make sure everybody can see that that actually happened. <laughs> yep, that was up there. So what we got here is we have a product. That product has an ID, and it has a title, and then it has a handle, which is kind of like just a way to refer to it, I think. And then you have your query, which is uh, products. So products is the query. So you're defining a query, and that query is products. And then the products query returns an array. That's why you have brackets there, an array of each of those product objects. So we have a Shopify backend that we created and we spun up, which is like two products that literally just have a title. So this is why going back to, this is like the most simple basic thing we can possibly build. So it's not about like, give me a whole shop e-commerce shopping cart with like one click. It's about like, how do you actually understand this stuff? So that is, and that's the whole schema, like that, that's it. So that should be fairly comprehensible. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to Bring in GraphQL request. So this is um, this is what we are using to actually make the GraphQL request from the Redwood API to the Steps and API. Because if you think about, it, you have you can make GraphQL requests from the Redwood front end to the Redwood back end, but the Redwood API doesn't have a public client <laughs> in it. So you have to instead either make request with something like node fetch, or you can use the, the GraphQL requests library. And then this is a whole chunk of code that is essentially portable to almost any really GraphQL kind of schema you're gonna work with. So take the db.js one and rename that to uh, to client. That's what you wanna do. Yeah. yeah, so this is where we had the Prisma, the Prisma schema or the Prisma client, which is we don't need. And this also has the, the logger which DT just put a ton of work into, and we should not just be ripping out, but demos, so. <laughs> All right, so let's kind of, can you close your terminal so we can kind of see this this whole thing? Yeah. This is what, this is a, a decent amount of code going on right here, but the, the high level explanation of it, and really all you need to know is that it's how you set the endpoint and the authorization header for when you're actually making your GraphQL request. So before we showed how we can do that in Postman, and we were making the GraphQL request and then Postman handles, you know, how you set your headers. Cause that's a nice graphical user interface, let's just set the headers. And so this is actually, if you're just making a request, like basic HTTP request, like what's gonna be the endpoint and what's gonna be the headers. And then once you have that, we're going to actually put our query in our services. So that'll be the third piece. And then that'll be the entire Redwood API. And like that chunk of code there is like literally copy and pasted from my Fauna project and it's, also can be copy and pasted with like app, uh, app sync. So you don't, you don't really write the client. We just don't have like a generator command for it yet, but really all you do is you write your schema and you write your services. That's, that's it, that's the entire deal. And this is going to be a GraphQL request. That's going to be, so yes, yeah, so SRC services products. And then it's not products, it's products.js, yeah. And then go ahead and close the terminal again, scroll up, cool. What we're doing here is we're bringing in the request from that client that we just created. So that's what's wrapping all of our queries so it knows what our headers are. And then we're also bringing in that GQL and that's what is, how I said, you're just throwing a bunch of string over, over the wire. So that's like just a nice little helper thing within the GraphQL request library to help do that translation. So this is what you saw Postman. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things where you can make GraphQL requests in so many ways. <laughs> like you can do it just with curl. You can do it with Insomniac, you can do it with Postman, you can do it with front end frameworks, you can do it with uh, just you know regular JavaScript. So there, there's so many different ways to do it. And so how you're gonna turn the query into something that's going to make sense along that path, I like, just give you a lot of ways to do it. But because it's just a string that we all agree on, it ends up you can take the query and the query's portal. Everything around the query is what's really complicated. Yeah. So much depends on a string that we all agree on. I know, right? Okay, um, sweet. We can uh, query that bad boy. Oh, wait, no, we can't. Uh, environment variable. So right. we need 
Wow. Yes, we need to take the environment dot env dot example, we'll change that to dot env. This is where you want to go off screen for a quick okay. second. Yes. How you doing, chat? Anyone got questions? Is anything we're saying making sense at all? Yeah. Thank you all for coming out. By the way, doesn't see. Hi, hi, Marie. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna add yeah yeah so the so the client js is i mean i wrote it so you could say it was provided by redwood in that sense <laughs> like but um it's it could be we could write a, a command that can handle that pr pretty simply because all it is is just giving you a client on the back end and it's going to be the same thing. It's like, okay, well, do we want to do is a node fest? Do you want to do is a GraphQL request? You know, we just talked about this, I think, in the in one of the recent meetup <laughs> meeting. And so you have uh, there's going to be a lot of different ways to make the GraphQL requests from your API. I think that this is the cleanest, simplest, most understandable way to most people. And in the in the Redwood example repo, I actually kind of talk a little bit about the differences between using node fetch and using just the, the GraphQL requests. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really say it's a custom wrapper so much as it's just using the conventions you'd get from using GraphQL requests with your, your keys, because you're putting your API key and you're setting your headers however you, you want to do it. But um, the that is abstract out because it's just environment variables. <laughs> so you, you have the environment variables that are really where all the magic is happening. And then the query itself is using just whatever environment variables you insert into it. But the query itself and the, the client, you don't really have to do anything special with it. And so you could do this with Apollo client if you wanted to. Yeah, weaving your step key in. That's exactly it. Yeah, and that's why right now Lucia is off screen right now because she is weaving her step key in. <laughs> this is something that when I streamed, I failed very, very badly at. And the whole world of 10 people or however many were watching got to see all my keys. So. <laughs> So I actually, I just made a little fake uh, .env file um, that we can pull up if you want to, just with the uh, variables yes. to replace. Yes. Let's do um, that. All righty. I'm just going to figure out how to share from here one more time. Uh, there we go. And just stream. Yeah, right, cool. There we are. So this is a, a dot and file and in mine we have replaced these with the values that are secret um but this is this is how you would set up your file yeah and steps in makes this very very easy for you also because they have a cli that can just like insert your keys where they where they need to go so there's a lot of like really great tooling being built up around this stuff right now and if that is all good to go, uh, let's see what happens when we run that query. So we're going to go back now to localhost 8911 slash GraphQL. And that is going to let us hopefully query our back end. Let's see. So oh, I think, you know. Um, I'll use the old endpoint, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I remembered the endpoint correctly. If you want to just explain that to me. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. So hold go that. off quickly and pick it up. So it's going to be um. Hold on, I got this is exactly why I had it in Insomnia over here because I knew this was going to happen. So, so there's you can you create your own endpoint, and so the endpoint is going to be Redwood dash Shopify forward slash Shopify. That was where I got confused. We got two Shopify's in here, so that's why it's confusing. So it's Redwood dash Shopify forward slash Shopify. Let me just replace that. I am off screen, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay. I would dash Shopify forward slash Shopify. Interesting. Yeah. Um, let me copy paste and show you the whole endpoint because I think that's what I have here. So behind the scenes, Anthony and I have Slack. Let's see. I'll have to open Slack first. I turned off the sound, but. Cool. That looks like it is all good. Okay, that should be good. All right. Yeah. So what do we? So just go change your change that in your .env file. Uh, restart the server, and we should be good to go. So what's happening? 
right now is we're making sure that the the Redwood API and the steps and API are understanding each other. And the way you do that is with the keys that you get from, from Step Zen. And what's what's cool though is that it like what we're doing here like it may seem a little complicated, but if you've ever worked in this kind of workflow with API keys and managing multiple services with different keys, like you can get to dozens of keys. Like right now we're managing two and like that's pretty nice. And so it's really just about like getting all these keys down to a much more manageable amount is, is very nice. All right, so why don't you go ahead? Oh, yeah, you're on it. Yeah, and then we'll go to 11. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yay, it's there. Yeah, yeah. That's our data coming back from Shopify. Awesome. And actually, won't you open up Docs on the right? Where, so where, where you are? No, so sorry. I meant, <laughs> so you have Docs in your in your graphical editor. I don't know if you know this. So over on the right, where it says Docs. Yeah. There we go. So go to Products. So there's your product, and there's your products query. So. This is what's really, really nice. Like one of many things that is very, very nice about GraphQL is that this is all here for you. For every GraphQL API you will ever hit, <laughs> you ever have or ever will, you're gonna get this info. Like if their schema might not make a lot of sense, but you're gonna at least have it, you know? So this is, and then, yeah, so that's like, we could have just written up, we could have like, look at this, see, okay, we want a prox query. And then what do we want from our prox queries? We can build up our queries just by looking at these docs. And now that we got all this going, um, we just have to get our Redwood cell to query now the Redwood API. Close that. Scroll down to that, and I'm going to run that in my VS Code. Yep. So now we are in, we are thoroughly in Redwood, Redwood world now. This is all Redwood isms. We're not changing anything or ripping out anything or doing anything crazy because Redwood already speaks GraphQL. So Redwood's front end is already has everything you could ever want to make GraphQL queries. And this is going to include something called a cell, which is a very specific um, uh, convention that Redwood has created that makes your data fetching declarative. So that's going to go into components, and then product cell, product cell. And then let's take a second just kind of look at this going closure terminal also because this is a, a bit much to parse here. So back to that query being a string, we're just throwing around. You now see this query is the third time we've seen the query. First, we sent this query in Postman, then we sent the query through Redwood API graphical editor. Now we're sending the query from our front end to our Redwood API. Now what's really cool though, is that Redwood is handling the, the response in the sense of it's going to handle whether you're getting a failure back or whether you actually got a success and you got the data. It'll also know whether your data is empty and you need you need data and also know if you're still loading data. And so this is a lot of this is because they're using Apollo client under the hood, but we actually have a React query provider that you can use as well, which is actually created by <laughs> CeeLo Fett, who's in the chat. So yeah. shout out. And this is, yes, yeah, so that's good to go. And then once you have that, all you have to do is import that component into your home page. All right, so let's make sure this is all saved. Way up. And, and still in web, the web SRC. So yeah, so close up that API one. Yeah, so it's still web and then SRC and then pages. Yeah, and then okay. home page. Yeah, it's funny. Usually, start the pages is what almost everyone usually starts with, but I'm I'm running backwards here. So, so we're going to import. Uh, I almost said blog post cell because I've done this so many times in the tutorial. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna import. Uh, so no no strings or anything like that. It's just gonna be I think it's product cell is the name. Okay, so import product cell from src forward slash. And then that'll be in strings. Uh, yep. And then src forward slash uh, components forward slash products cell. There you go. And then just have us, and then in the return, you're just going to return a single self closing component that is products cell. So leave, leave, the, leave the h1 there actually. And then just under, under it, yeah, just. Yeah, you got it. 
Uh, should I uh, do we redeploy from here or is this picking it up? Nope, your your web server is watching all the changes. This is automatically going to be updated. So we go to our home page. We are done for the day. Alrighty. I'm going to run to this and switch to 910. Nailed it. There it is. Woo! Yeah, so there's your whole full stack Redwood Steps in Shopify app for you. Um, any other questions? Uh, we can hang on for a little bit more if anyone wants to know about what we just built or they want to know about Steps in, in general or GraphQL in general. Uh, we're always happy to answer any questions or anything that we've we've got going on. So yeah. And how, so how is that uh, for you, Lucia? Like building this kind of like Redwood application as someone who's like not super duper Redwood. If, it, you know, in the in the whole zone there. So how was that? It's it's a rush to to see everything go up so quickly. Um, also, really cool to see like steps and power and flexible. and how it fits in so well too is is, is yeah. what's awesome. Is that like it it very much can almost like become part of your your Redwood project in, in a really cool way because I I was kind of like. I think I was brought on partly because of, you know, my connection to Redwood and this this whole world. And it, it took me a couple of months to even figure out how you would even get them to kind of like work together. Not because it was complicated to get them to work together, it's because like it was complicated to even wrap my mind around the two of them and how they would relate to each other and how you could use one with with the other. And um, once it kind of like clicked, because as I was saying earlier in the stream, how I went through this process of trying to build all this stuff without Redwood. And I kind of did that on purpose is that, you know, I didn't want to just show up like, all right, on the Redwood, I'm going to build everything at Redwood, you know? So I tried to build a bunch of applications that are going to be using different GraphQL tech, yeah. and then eventually found myself arriving back to the answer of Redwood in the end. Claire's right, yeah. question is, is great. Yeah, we can definitely yeah, yeah, go, pull go in for, from multiple it. data sources. Um, you can pull in from any kind of API, REST API, um, or your own database. A UPS shipping. I believe we have a shipping sample at some point in our repo, don't we, Anthony? You can import, which makes that yeah, super fast. Yeah, um, we actually integrated that with one of our next JS front end apps as well, which is also in the steps and samples repo that we're that we're linking to here. So yeah, that's that's the whole idea is that once you have this really cool like for this project, at least once you have this really cool full stack app set up, then you can bring in any other kind of backends you want very, very easily because all the conventions are already there for you. But if you're not in a full stack app, you can still just be a front end that wants to do this kind of like content mesh thing like, you know, Gats Gatsby would do. Right. It's really powerful for doing that as well. Yeah. And then, but you're not like restricted by the plugins. Like, yes. Yeah, the exactly. Content mesh. Um, yeah. Cool. Any other questions today? Very interested in how steps in can help me build a hands-off business where the APIs do everything. Oh, man, that's the dream, right? <laughs> I just yeah. build a thing that does all my things for me so I can stop doing things. That would be great, that, right? That is why there are software developers in the world. Yeah, no, I think that this is- It's, it's like, it, I'd, I'd rather spend more work doing that than, <laughs> than doing good things. You know, this is something like David has, has talked about about like the the velocity you get from these kind of tools like Lucia was saying how it's like super cool seeing it like get spun up super fast and like I agree like as a developer you do get a rush from it but like when you start thinking outside of your own experience as a developer like developers being able to build faster is like a massive economic impactor and like you know when so much of the you know the economy is you know run by uh tech stuff and tech businesses and that kind of thing so if you can build better tools that make these kind of integrations and make, you know, and can leverage developer hours. Developer hours are very, very, very scarce, you know? And that's why we're doing our best to train as many developers as we can get as many developers into the industry as well. But you have to, you have to meet it in the middle. You have to bring on more developers. You also have to simplify the tools for all the developers coming in as well. So yeah, cool. definitely super passionate about all that. Well, thanks for showing me around Redwood today, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, super fun. And then um, do you have an idea of what you're going to teach me next week? Yeah, I was thinking I was going to show you around uh, your own MySQL database and how steps and can make uh, building GraphQL API on that super easy. Yeah, that's uh, as someone who has worked a lot with Postgres and a GraphQL API through through Redwood, I, I definitely am very interested to, to dive into that a little more and start to figure out how we can, you know, 
leverage that for all the cool full stack different projects we can be building. Right. And just let everyone know, this is going to be uh, posted online within the next day or two on our YouTube channel. We'll be sharing it through the, the Twitter as well. i uh, just going to drop a couple links in the chat so you guys kind of know where you can find us. Here is our Twitter, which is uh, stepsn underscore dev. And then our just want to show up the YouTube. That's what we should give. Thank YouTube. You. Steps in, and then we'll also drop the home page as well. Yeah, and if you're curious, and curious about diving those steps in, I'm just going to drop the, the docs in there. This is our YouTube channel, and then steps in. Yeah, we're just stepsin.com. Step like the word step, and zen like the word zen. All right. Um, yeah, I think that that about ends it for us. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good one.